The Titanic movie is something that we are all somewhat aware of, but there's that famous scene of Jack and Rose stood at the boat the ship, the winning the races, with the sunset in the background. But what about some other scenes, which are a little more present in the first Titanic movie? The plot of the movie is to escape the ship, but how do the people survive and get back on land? Now obviously, there are three classes on the Titanic, such as the first class, the second class, and the third class, meaning that when they were evacuating the passengers onto the lifeboats, people from the first class were prioritized along with women and children. But what if I give you another scenario, but a lot more conditions? This experiment is called the Shipwreck Experiment. Morality wants bottom line, not high. An experiment which was suggested by an ethics lab at the university. The professor's goal was to make students realize their actual morals, principles, and choosing their escape plans, and try to pass the understanding of these principles. Now, here's a scenario. On a sinking ship exactly like Titanic, there are 12 people in total, but only one lifeboat, which can only carry 6 people. Here are the 12 people. A 72-year-old doctor, a totally ill little girl, a captain, a prostitute, a proficient labor prisoner, a mentally disabled boy, a young model worker, a Catholic priest, a corrupt city cater, a business manager, a newly broke self-employed, and yourself. It is impossible to change the situation, and it is impossible to imagine. Everyone will obey, and we don't know anything else than what is given. I wrote the list down on a piece of paper, stared at it for two seconds, and these are the lists that I came up with. The people who will be on the lifeboat include the 72-year-old doctor, Tilly, a little girl, the captain, the business manager, the newly broke self-employed, and myself. This means that the people who are left on the sinking boat are the prostitute, the professional labor prisoner, the mentally disabled boy, the young model worker, the Catholic priest, and the corrupt state cater. This is just me and my first thoughts after I wrote them down. Now here are the results from the discussion in the class asked of who should be saved. Yourself got 10 votes, the doctor got 9 votes, the captain, the prostitute, and the young water worker each got 8 votes, the disabled boy, the mentally ill little girl, the new outbreak of self-employed person each got 7 votes, the Catholic priest, the corporate manager each got 4 votes, and the corrupt state official got 1. There are several principles to consider while evaluating the situation and making the choice of who to save and who to leave behind. First, the very principle. After all the principles of choice, there is the principle of preserving and respecting life. If the situation allows, all 12 people's lives should be respected. Respecting and preserving life is an imperative command and the primary principle of morality. We would have to force a painful choice. We'd have to sacrifice some people's lives in order to let the others have the possibility to survive. This is the conflict of obligations between moral and practical responsibilities as humanitarians in times of crisis or natural catastrophes like this. The second principle is the principle of possibility of survival. First, consider the possibility of survival. This may be why the proficient labor prisoner seems to have an unexpectedly high number of votes. It's because he's skilled at boat handling and sea farm. The medical skills of doctors and physical strength of young workers are also needed for drifting at sea, and some students choose those young workers for this exact reason. As for the third principle, self-first principle. The choice of myself may be due to some specific circumstances, or it could be out of the general principle of egoism. Quote unquote, it goes without saying that everyone must save themselves first, or quote unquote, everyone must save themselves first. If it is not your choice, maybe you will secretly or subconsciously hope that you are chosen. If you can only choose one person, then the conflict between yourself and the others will be very acute. But since there is actually a buffer here, because you can choose five other people in addition to yourself, you can also apply other principles, egotensity, self regard, etc. Moving on to the fourth principle, the principle of giving priority to women and children. To this is the ontological principle rather than its experiential principle. That is, the main consideration is not the effect but the obligation. This principle is also the principle adopted by many wrecked ships such as the Titanic, the one we just mentioned at the very beginning, where few survivors played a big role in the survival. However, is there a question of human qualifications and whether there is still a divine restraint or deterrence, a person who abandons a child in this way will also be abandoned by God or the child herself. You can also take into account of the meaning of the principle such as a general principle. Many people who choose themselves think that they can make a greater contribution to society in the future, thereby creating a greater happiness in mankind, which is why the votes for corporate managers or business manager are mostly due to the contribution they make to society. As for the sixth principle, the happiness principle of average utility or fairness, some argue that managers, corporate stakeholders, and old doctors should be rejected in the civil service. This is a relatively narrowed understanding of utility, that is, its main understanding is happiness, to let those who have enjoyed it before retire, and those who have been strived to survive. As for the last principle, the virtue principle, it is simply based on the saying, choosing the good person first, prioritizing the people who have better intentions rather than the people who are ill-intended. 
So coming to an end, based on these seven principles, looking back on my choices, I was very morally incorrect because I was thinking a lot more who could make the biggest contribution to society instead of choosing a more morally oriented decision. After making some changes, processing a little more things, these are the people who I choose to save. The 17 year old doctor, the 28 year old little girl, the prostitute, the proficient labor prisoner, the mentally disabled boy, and myself. As for the people who are going to sink along with the ship, this include the captain, the young model worker, the Catholic priest, the corrupt state caterer, the business manager, and the newly broke self-employed worker.